Hi everybody and welcome to Vlogmas and if you're new to our channel I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British early retirees debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty frugal and money saving life here in Brittany in northwest France and we bring you some extra videos for Christmas. We hope that you enjoy them. We might cook, we might make something, we'll share something Christmassy with you. We hope you enjoy the video. So as you can see, I'm talking to you today for this midweek money chat out on our lovely morning walk. And I'm gonna share with you today the things that I've bought in the past, happily, but I won't buy again, because for me, it doesn't represent good value. And let's start off with the first thing. And uh, I'll tell you a little story to begin with. Every single year in the UK, there is a debate on what you're gonna have for Christmas. You can have a duck, you can have a turkey, you can have a goose, and it's never cheap. And it's something you put money aside for. And you sometimes are in like the, you pay in advance a bit of a week at the butchers. and. I did this and I'd saved up at the butchers and I decided I was going to splash out. And this was the year that I was going to buy a goose. I mean, I'm talking here, oh, 25, 30, maybe 30 years ago, 30 years ago. And it was so expensive. You know, it was this free range organic goose from this lovely local farm and good for the farmers for providing such top quality meat. Anyway, I, even back then, I expect it cost me about 70 or 80 pounds. They're so expensive. And I roasted this and I tended to it and I basted it. Oh, and I made all the sides to go with it, all the sauces. And I sat down with great intrepidation to eat it. And I'm eating it, having never eaten goose before, thinking like, this is delicious, but it's just like duck. It's just like duck. And then a little light went on and I went, well, that's all a goose is, isn't it? It's a great big duck. And so I learned a very solitary lesson that Christmas, having spent all of that money, that, you know, if it quacks like a duck, it is a duck, isn't it? And, it, and to be honest with you, even if there's a load of you, just buy two or three ducks, they're not as expensive as goose. So I know all you goose farmers, you do a lovely job and we appreciate every single one of you, but we won't be buying your geese anymore. It's ridiculously expensive. Um, and it's just, like I said, it's just a great big duck. So there's thing that I bought in the past is I will not ever go to the expense ever again of buying a goose for Christmas. <laughs> As I'm standing by this huge pile of logs on my roadside walk today, it reminds me of something else that we don't buy anymore. And as much as I think they're beautiful and they're lovely, and if you buy them, I'm, I'm really happy for you, is that we don't buy a real Christmas tree anymore. And I've tried them all. I've tried them all. I've even been, and when the children were young, it was something to do, wasn't it? You went to the farm and you walked around, you picked your Christmas tree and you had it cut down in front of you and wrapped and, you know, you're taking it home. And uh, and the needles fell off just the same. And, you know, I bought them from the corner shop. I bought them from the supermarket. I bought them from the petrol station and the garden centre. I don't know what it is, but maybe I'm a really bad custodian of real trees, but I did everything I should have done. I watered them, everything. And, you know, always just about by Christmas, it was, you know, looking like lacked needles. <laughs> lacked needles. <laughs> So, you know, I've had bad experiences with Christmas trees. I love them. I absolutely love them. There's a beautiful one in this village square that I, every time I drive past it, I love it. I absolutely love it. But I won't be buying any more Christmas trees because, like I said, maybe I'm not a good custodian of Christmas trees and they just end up looking a bit sad. <laughs> Let's carry on with this walk and, and talking to you about things that, you know, when I say I don't buy them anymore, it's like I've learned, I've learned the hard way with all of these that I'm going to share with you today. And this is the one that's really important for, and for me, it's really important anyway, is I do not buy gifts for people if I don't know what they want. And I think in the past I used to have this list of gifts I was going to buy for people 
and I would always be looking and I would be drawn into those Christmas gifts wouldn't I you know I was just thinking about things like you know uncles granddads and dads and people like that they always have like the the mittens and socks and things in a lovely display box and stuff like that and you never know if they're ever going to wear them or not or if it's what they like or not and uh you, you just get wise to this don't you you just think well that cost me a lot of money and it's the, the intention when i bought it was really really good and i don't do that anymore i it may be not be christmasy the way you do it but i asked people what do you want i'm going to buy you a present what do you want give me two or three options tell me what you want how much it is where you want me to buy it from or do you want the money or do you want the do you want a voucher and most people these days they'll just say oh, give me an amazon voucher i don't know what i want i'll buy something another time or in in some people's case i'll say get me a supermarket voucher that would be really handy in the new year so there we go i no longer ever ever buy people something even with all the good intentions in the world that it's a lovely gift and I'm sure that they will love it. I don't do anything like that anymore. I just make sure I ask them what they want and give them exactly what they want. Let's share with you now the Marks and Spencers Christmas that I will never do again. One year we went to great trouble and expense of saving up for and putting the money aside for and preparing for buying Christmas. Literally like all of it, all the food, everything from Marks and Spencers. And they'll have like a, a package that you can order. Let's say it's like the silver package, the bronze package, the gold package, or, or whatever they might call it year on year. And we ordered one of these. And um, I was pretty disappointed. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not slating Marks and Spencers here. Their products are good. There's nothing wrong with them. The quality is good. But I think that you can get just as good a quality from any of the supermarkets now. And we did it the once. And like I said, you know, you know, when you eat something and you've paid all this money for it and you've built up your expectations that it's going to be wonderful. And then you eat it and just think, well, this is just, you know, A for average. It's all right. It's not amazing, it's all right. So, we won't be doing that again. And do you know what, this year, in, our, in the French supermarkets, I noticed they were leafleting at the door and you could do exactly the same. You could order all like your Christmas bundle of food for X amount of people and, and, and get it all organized and for you. And I thought, mm, I'm not falling for that one again. I'll just walk around the shops. It's not inconvenient now because I'm retired, but I mean, even if I was working, I would still do it. And I'd make sure that I pick it all out myself and then I wouldn't really worry, but I won't do that one again. I will never again do a convenience at Christmas because like I said, we were a bit disappointed. The last one I'm gonna share with you is something that we've, we've tried several times in the past. Um, as your family grows and expands, Sometimes you, it's convenient for you as a whole family to go out and all meet up somewhere and have a Christmas meal. Not necessarily Christmas dinner on Christmas day, but a Christmas meal. And because it's always busy at this time of year, especially in, the, I'm talking about the UK here, you've usually got to book in advance. So let's say there's 10 of you, table for 10, and you book this big Christmas meal. And it looks, the price looks, you think, oh, that's okay. You know, it's 20 pounds each or something. And then it's a difficult time of year for caterers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point that out. It's a difficult time of year for caterers. It's a you know, difficult time to get staff, difficult time to get your supplies in, all of those things. But every single time, it doesn't matter where we went, it could have been a chain pub, it could have been a family restaurant, any of those. I think once we did it in the garden centre. <laughs> and each and every time, again, We've been completely disappointed. It's been mediocre to the point of boring and unpleasant. And that's, you know, that's not a broad brush against all people in catering. Many of you out there, you're, you're doing an outstanding job. But on those occasions when we went out and spent our hard earned cash, we weren't impressed. We really, really weren't impressed. It was all very much out of a freezer microwaved or reheated or 
it was never ever worth what we paid. So that's something else that we wouldn't do ever again. If we met up as a family and we did go out for a meal, it would definitely not be at Christmas time. Thank you so much for watching and happy Vlogmas to everybody.